experts to uh, ask the question. Inflation, fact or fiction? These two, they weren't really together. They were a little bit yesterday. We wanted to bring them back. Diane Swank, Chief Economist at Mesro Financial. Peter Schiff, uh, President of Euro Pacific Capital. Welcome to you both. Uh, Peter, great to see you in the studio. Diane, just one second. Are, do you take offense to the Dr. Doom moniker? You remember no. the last guy that had it was a huge economist. Oh, I know, I know. A, a household name. So I yeah, think Henry Kaufman. So. You embrace it. Sure, no problem. Uh, all right, well, let's, let's get started. Uh, we talk off camera, Peter. The minute Time Magazine or someone gets gets on the inflation bandwagon, we're back to 550 in like a month. What about that? Well, that's just temporary. But what I really wanted to talk about first is is the whole definition of inflation, because I think inflation is probably one of the most misunderstood words in in the English language. I brought with me a, a Webster's definition of inflation, which properly defines inflation as an expansion in the supply of money and credit. It mentions the result of inflation, which is rising prices, but they're the result, not inflation itself. In fact, if you get an earlier definition from Webster's, it doesn't even mention prices. It, so, does this have to do with Diane taking issue with something? It, it, something well, you yesterday said yesterday when I, I mentioned that I look at money supply as an indication of see what's happened with inflation, and, and it produced a, a laughter, which I think is indicative of the misunderstanding uh, with respect to inflation. Now, let me explain really how inflation has worked in the price oh, system. Because I want to let that yes. it was Diana who was laughing. And I think she sure. might be laughing well, again. I can't well, see well, it. I, I, and I, it, I did apologize for laughing, but the reality is that we can't count the money supply very well, especially in a global economy. Even the Fed no longer um, counts the money supply and well, relies on it as a reliable indicator. So although, in theory, all your talk may be correct, in application, it's not very useful for No, it's extremely policy. useful in application. Let's go back to the 1990s. The Fed created a lot of inflation in the 1990s. What Americans did with Acid those dollars? inflation. No, let me finish. What Americans did with that money is they spent it on imported products because America lacked the industrial capacity to produce those products ourselves. So money went abroad. That kept the lid on prices, but it didn't end there. Foreigners used those dollars that we created to bid up U.S. stocks. They invested in our stock market. That produced rising stock prices. That was inflation. When the stock market bubble burst. Foreigners then recycle those dollars into the bond market. That produced a rise in bond prices. It dropped interest rates, allowing Americans to bid up real estate prices. Americans then use their added home equity to borrow more money and send more dollars abroad, uh, which foreigners then use to bid up natural resource prices uh, that were necessary in the production process. So rising stock prices, rising real estate prices, rising commodity prices are all a result of the inflation that the Fed has been creating. Ultimately, now, now that wait a minute. inflation... With that said, let though, me finish. No, but wait a minute. You're, you're talking about that being inflation about for the Fed. The Fed does not fight asset-based inflation. Yeah. So it has come out very strongly in saying we cannot fight asset-based inflation. So for definitional purposes and for people in the market, we have to be very clear about what the Fed is willing to challenge in terms of asset-based inflation versus goods-based inflation, and they're not. And all this neat little picture that you talk about um, is almost absent of the fact that profit share was rising during the 1990s, as it has been in the 2000s, which which tends to lead towards more asset-based inflation rather than goods-based inflation. Well, first you of all, more inflation there's inflation no... resistance in the economy when you have rising okay. profit share there's... versus rising wage share. There's no such thing as asset-based inflation or goods-based inflation. There's just inflation. Inflation can show up in, in asset prices. Not and according it can... to the Federal Reserve. And if we're talking about what it means for financial markets, you need to be very clear about how the Federal Reserve defines inflation, not how you no, I don't care inflation. how the government defines inflation. I care what inflation actually is. The government is trying to confuse the public. The government has a vested interest. They're not trying to confuse the sure public. They are. That's just ridiculous. The, no, it's this, not. Is a, this is a Fed chairman. Have you ever talked to a Federal Reserve government? Do you I don't even have, know where they're coming from? I don't have to talk from? to them. I don't have to talk you to them. You don't have to know what they're coming from? No, I know what inflation is, and I know what their agenda is. Where they're coming from, given that they're the experts on inflation, no, and they're not experts. coming there once. Oh, they're not. Let, okay. let, me, let me just. Uh, well, then the we do have a fundamental difference. Hold on, difference. Second, hold on, okay. second, hold on, one second, Peter. Let me, let, back in the '90s, if you used uh, your definition, that's not my definition. It's oh, okay, Webster's but, definition. If, but if we've been fooled all along, uh, then <laughs> the financial markets, which value stocks based on inflation and inflationary expectations, and the bond market as well. I mean, how long have bonds been? You know, we had Jimmy Rogers been... say they'd never fall below six percent. So the entire global financial system has been fooled by what inflation really was based on what the U.S. See, now you've got it. You can get an honorary doctorate in, in doing it. Is that likely to end <laughs> that the markets can be so wrong for so long? Well, that's, that's, about... a, that's one of the problems with inflation. It creates malinvestments. It creates overinvestments. It distorts uh, economic thinking. And ultimately, we're all going to pay the price for that. But the U.S. economy, rather than being the engine of growth, is simply the engine of global infl inflation. 
And I now, think. Wait a minute here. Now, you, you did mention, in terms of you're talking about, that foreigners somehow created the asset based inflation. Okay, you are created your it. definition of. No, wait a minute here. We at Bernanke has done a lot of work looking at foreign net saving coming to the U.S. We also know that the global, the real estate boom that we saw, the housing price boom, was a global phenomenon. And in fact, um, other countries like Spain and U.K. saw much more signs of national housing market bubbles than we ever experienced in the United States. So, That's true, you know, but this remember. This was a global phenomenon. This was not a U.S. phenomenon. This was something that happened across all countries. Right, so, but there was again, inflation. There was inflation all over the world as foreign central banks debased their own currency and inflated to prevent the dollar from falling. So inflation has resulted in, in real estate prices rising worldwide. I'm not, I'm not saying that that didn't happen. I still, why isn't gold on an inflation-adjusted basis? I mean, even that market has not reflected what you would call 20 years of hyperinflation. Well, it's beginning That's to. Right. I mean, it rose from, it was $250. Well, it's falling back again as well. well uh, demand goes, from not, China has nothing to do with commodity-based prices. Well, sure, but where is that demand coming from? We're creating the money that we're exporting there. A lot of the demand is inflationary. Now, certainly part of the demand has to, or part Market of the reason... Market reforms had nothing to do with this structural change, productivity growth. I mean, the, well, no, there the, has the, been a lot the of situation that you're talking about here sort of is devoid of a whole context of structural change globally in the globalization no, there has been of a lot the world of... economy. I just, I just find it a little bit unfair to tell viewers that this is a simplistic um, no, not. way to look at the economy. Yes, it is. It's not unfair at all. Sure, there has been productivity growth in China, n no doubt about it. In fact, one of the reasons... And that in the U.S., some Remarkable growth in the Well, US. I, I would disagree there. I think that's more sleight of hands for the statisticians. I mean, uh, if we really had. Excuse me. I'm from Detroit. Have you been in an auto plant recently? Well, I, I can see what I our mean, trade deficit is. If we were so no, productive, no, why do we have at, a trade deficit? Where's all the merchandise we're producing? We, it, we still produce a lot of merchandise. But why, why do we have a $65 billion a month trade deficit? We have we have the highest propensity to consume and invest of any country in the world. We've been growing rap more rapidly than other countries in the world. You're right. We have the we, propensity and, and to consume, result, but be, not invest, not produce. We're going to be sucking produce. in more imports than exports, all else equal. Um, we have That's a more efficient true. economy. We have, yes. Even we don't if, have even a more efficient economy. E yes, we, we have do. a bubble have a economy. Efficient. We're borrowing from abroad to consume. That's not efficiency. You know, I've been waiting it for you two to get, you're not going to get personal, are you? You're just going to keep arguing the, the intellectual. <laughs> well, that's why we're here. Well, what's the point of getting personal? I'm I don't, kidding, I don't I'm know kidding. him. I'm he doesn't know me. There's I know. No we, we, I'm personal. kidding. We hate it when it when it uh, disintegrates into that. This has been all. I like the. This has been perfect. Just what we're looking for in terms of uh, <laughs> two people, intellectual um, combat, more or less. And and we, we we're going to do this again sometime. But the real number. Comes Let's do it later in the morning next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, remember, all, 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 all the CPI. Here. You got to get the last right. word, Doctor. All Dune. the CPI is all the CPI is doing is trying to measure one of the effects of inflation, and it's a highly manipulated uh, measurement. Uh, certainly, since they changed it a lot in the 1990s. What do you think, Diane? Yeah, we'll give you the last you word. Know, Last word is, um, it's by far, it, it is not a perfect measure, it's imperfect, but manipulated is a little bit too covert for me. The government just isn't that organized on this data and make it that covert. They're all, they're they're all in reverse engineered, but whatever it is, it's trying to hide or mask <laughs> the symptoms of inflation. And, and Republicans, just, Democrats, just, it spans all administrations, they're all, they're yeah, all I, I'm just, You know what, I just spend too much time with these people to know that they're not organized to be that good Black at conspiracies. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> all right, thanks, Diane. Diane Swank, uh, Chief Economist. At Mesro Financial, Peter Schiff, you're close enough to come in here, right? Yeah, well, it's only, uh, it only took me 45 minutes or 35 minutes. President uh, of how much that, that man, the inflation and what we when we send a car, it's been going through the roof. I know, and they, and they picked me up in an <laughs> SUV too. Not that smart. Perfect. Uh, so we got that problem. The president of Europe Pacific uh, Capital. Uh, thanks to you both.